All right, I am here with NJ Weaver. NJ is a Round Rock artist. And what's really cool is that she lives in the neighborhood directly behind the gallery here, which I also live in. So we're practically mm -hmm. neighbors. And you know, until I had opened this gallery and you, you were in another show of mine, mm -hmm. um, we had never met. <laughs> so it's pretty cool, I think, neighborhood um, artists here. Um, NJ, could you give us a little background information about um, sort of where you're from and uh, how you, have you been an artist all your life? Have you always done printmaking, that kind of thing? Amy, thank you for um, including me in this show. Um, I, I enjoyed being in your abstract show and it's nice to have a, a little gallery here in the neighborhood and it's 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 a lovely gallery too. Thank uh, you. The things that you have had that you have exhibited and shown um, have been really nice. So it's nice to be included. Um, for your question, uh, I had to think about this because I forget how many years it's been, but um, I, I have not been an artist all my life. I think I probably was, but didn't realize it. Yeah. I've spent most of my life being surrounded by really creative people. Um, and never really thought one moment, you know, could I do this or I can do this, that sort of thing. Never, never happened. Just was not the way I was grown up, uh, brought up. Um, somewhere in my time in New Mexico, uh, I don't know what it's, New Mexico is kind of inspiring. And I ended up having artist friends there <laughs> who would say, you should paint. And I, I thought, I can't paint. So I ended up um, getting involved in kind of fiber arts and I started quilting and taking some classes and I, I think I was kind of dabbling arts and crafts sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up coming back to Texas uh, 2004 and uh, anyway from there I had a friend take me to a gallery which exposed me to this collage work which was just amazing. So from there it was kind of like all these light bulbs kind of started you know, just turned on and I just kind of went with it and started doing some collage myself. Uh, I ended up being in the uh, Round Rock, uh, first Round Rock um, Imagine show. Mm -hmm. And I met someone there who was really um, encouraging. And it wasn't like one of those things where, oh, I really like your work, you know, something like that. It was something that just kind of made me feel like maybe I could do this. So um, I just kind of one thing led to another. So it's been, I think it's been about 16 years that I've been uh, working to show my work professionally, uh, exhibiting in studios, that sort of thing. I love your story of like how you got to this point. And what I heard in there was encouragement from others. And you said, you were probably an artist, but didn't know it. Because I think that to some extent, all humans are, we are we're all creators, mm -hmm. you know, and we have that in us. And, and it's just a matter of doing, trying, or being inspired. Um, and also when you said you were in one show and then somebody noticed something in your work, right? Mm -hmm. And that's yes. just so important, I think, um, for us as artists to have that, you know, feedback from others, that encouragement. Mm -hmm. um, another artist earlier was saying that we're our worst critic. Yes. You know, and something that we might feel like is maybe not good enough, somebody else might love, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, that happens time and time again things that I don't care for at all, somebody will come in and, and say something about it or, or buy it. Yeah. <laughs> and I almost feel like maybe I should pay you. <laughs> but it's you know, compliment though, when somebody purchases your work. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Oh, it's the highest compliment you can get. I think because they're yeah. taking it into their personal space, whether it be an office or their home or, you know, wherever they're going to live with it. And that, that is huge, huge. Yeah, it really is. You were talking um, about encouragement. Um, every, every step of what the way it's been either other artists, people that you're around, people that you're learning from, you can't help but not learn. So you're constantly mm -hmm. in a, 
absorbing mode, even mm -hmm. though you sometimes feel like you're in a rut, I think, but um, it is, it all comes down to, I wouldn't be where I'm at now, which I, and I'm not even saying I'm in anywhere. I mean, I, I feel like a novice, but it's always the people around us that, that kind of lift us up and, mm -hmm. and spur us on. So definitely. Yeah. And so earlier you said that you started out with fabric art and you moved to collage um, and, and now you're doing printmaking, but you also do lots of other things, right? You do painting. Yes, I would say I'm, I really consider myself a novice printmaker. Um, okay. I got involved with Print Austin in, I think it was 2014 that maybe I had some prints, but um, it really started before that. I was in a studio uh, on Bomb Road and Catherine Small was a printmaker and a, a painter. And I used to go in there and ask her questions about, well, how did you do this? How did you do that? Mm -hmm. It just was kind of like this different part of my brain I couldn't figure out. And uh, then um, she would, you know, so patiently explain. And then I ended up meeting uh, Kathy Savage, who is co-founder of Print Austin. Mm -hmm. And I was at the uh, Georgetown Art Center when I think it was the first year of Print Austin. And we had this conversation about you know, what's in Taglio? What's this? What's that? What does that mean? How do you do that? And, and that kind of is where it started. There was also um, in Austin, uh, the Women Printmakers of Austin, and they had been around for maybe, I want to say like 20 years. Mm -hmm. And it was this wonderful collaborative uh, studio where you could go there and print and everyone with, you know, shared information and printmaking is collaborative anyway. And, um, Anyway, I got in on the tail end of that. So they had this great place to print and uh, it's sadly no more, but Teresa Bond and uh, mm -hmm. Carol Heyman, they were also part of um, Women Printmakers. So mm -hmm. I would not consider myself a printmaker primarily. I consider myself a painter and my printmaking is really an extension of my painting. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, the, the piece behind me, the kind of reddish pink, um, piece that's a monotype correct right and that that's more um of my uh abstract sort of painting and there I believe there's some collage in there also could you kind of walk us through the process of that for those who don't understand or don't know much about it well um I, I don't know how much anyone has uh, talked about this before but you have a plate you start out with a plate and uh, depending on what type of printing you're doing, whether you have some sort of intaglio or lines that you're inking and you wipe the ink away and those lines appear when you uh, do the press or run it through the press. But for me, I will paint on a plate mm -hmm. and then I will uh, put it in the press or put it in the press and then run it through. And then sometimes I will come back and um, usually you have ink on your plate left over after the first run mm -hmm. and you have you can run it again and that's a ghost mm -hmm. so a lot of times I will um run it through and I'll I'll print on top of that ghost and I think mm -hmm. that particular painting or that particular print is um originated as a ghost print and then painting on top of that and adding collage to the mm -hmm. plate and then once you run it through it 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 no I take it back Shin Kole goes through the press. Collage, if this, if I'm remembering correctly, um, was put on the print after I had it after it had gone through the press. Oh, okay. Is that so confusing? Added after. So yes. I know there's different ways you could do it. Couldn't you collage a paper and then print on top of that? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. You can do that. Shin Kole is um, I really love that. Um it's where you put one of her papers and there's kind of a, uh, for, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but uh, there's a type of glue and mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like a powder sort of thing. Okay. And you can put that on the back of the paper and then you put it on uh, the plate and then it, it adheres to your paper. Okay. Yeah. So it's super pressed in. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, so is all of your work abstract? For the most part? I would say for the most part. Um, I know that one of the questions you talked about was um, asking about that. What are you drawn to? And I think I think 
abstractly. I was thinking about this not too long ago. I really love people who are, um, do uh, portraits and representational art because it almost seems like they have a plan. <laughs> and, <laughs> and and people really love things that they can identify with. Yeah. And um, I just don't think that way. Um, I, I think I've always loved color. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really drawn to lines and forms and texture. Mm -hmm. um, and I paint intuitively. So I don't ever know what's going to really come. Um, it just it just kind of talks to me. Um, if there is any sort of a, a, an image, it comes sometimes from transfers of photography that you can do a transfer into mm -hmm. a painting or a collage or, or even collage. You can, you know, you can collage anything. So, um, so I would say that's, that's my answer to that. I don't really have a plan when I start out. But, but that's like the fun of it. Like you never know really what you're going to get, right? Exactly. With your process. Uh-huh. It's kind of like uh, Christmas. <laughs> it, it is, but the thing about it too is um it's like a zone. And when you get into the zone, that's when I say it talks to you. Uh I remember specifically doing a painting, and um I have to say some of the weirdest things I've done, people have bought. And and that's been one of those times where it's really talked to me. And I have this particular painting and it is owned by someone. And I was thinking about the things that were going on in my life. They were, they were kind of challenging. And I was asking questions mm -hmm. and these questions kind of came out in this, this painting. And the painting ended up being something like a crossroad. Mm -hmm. And that was where I was at. Mm -hmm. And it, it, and I would hear, I would hear these words and it came out in the painting. Okay. And I, yeah, and then um, I first showed it at East and I wrote a little thing about it. Mm -hmm. And um, it was um, not to get political, but it was in 2016. And it was just um, a time where people were, uh, the election had just happened and mm -hmm. people were, they were kind of shell shocked. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking in general about things of crossroads and, and people, really identified with this piece so it was really it was really fun and that's one of the examples of when it always get, when it goes a good way yeah I've also enjoyed your titles like you take you have a real abstract you know image and then and then there's a title that um the title can't help but like lend some explanation to kind of what you were thinking <laughs> like this one behind me no clear path to heart's heart, desire to the heart's desire yeah what's that all about <laughs> well i i really can't tell you um um the thing about it is that particular that particular painting of uh, printmaking the print was uh done um at a certain time period and I had another print. Oh gosh, now I can't remember the name of it. Uh, and the and I, I I had this really zone I was in with these titles. And like I say, I don't do I very seldom do I have a title and then I do a painting for it. They, right. The titles always come later. But this that. particular one was like something like um, what seemed like fog was only confusion. <laughs> and. <laughs> It was like, and I went, where did I get that? I love you know, it. where, where did that come from? Where did that come from? So I, that's one of those things about the zone. And uh, I would say my titles sometimes are in the zone. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, how has the pandemic affected you as an artist? Like, like maybe um, I've heard some other, some of the other artists say, that you know, they tried something that they wouldn't have tried otherwise, or because they were at home, they did this instead of doing this other thing. Has it affected you in some way? How could it not affect everybody? Um, I would say I started out trying to be semi-productive. I tried to be creative in a way uh, 
even though I didn't feel that way. Um, and I took some online classes and one of the classes I took was experimental drawing, uh -huh. which doesn't seem like drawing at all, but it ended up being so much fun. I really love it. I think there's one piece behind me over uh -huh. there that's one over my shoulder there. Um, and then I did a printmaking without a press and that was okay. I like the other one better, but after that, um, oh, and I ended up getting, um, there was a Facebook group that had an online, um, wanted to do an online exhibit and it had to do with, um, it was called viral collaboration. And you picked one word and one color, your, your piece was gonna be predominantly one color okay. and that, that you picked a word and how it made you feel. And at the time, all of this had started, it, my word was vulnerable. That was one of those words that popped in my head. It was vulnerable. Okay. So um, I did that. So at the beginning, I was kind of trying. And then after that, I just didn't feel creative anymore. I felt like I was pushing myself. Mm. And so I've just kind of retreated in a way. Um, and I'm thinking, I think more about art than I do about doing art. And I know I'm, I'm kind of in a, not in the zone because I haven't bought any art supplies. Mm -hmm. any, <laughs> so usually not that I need any, but um, there's something about buying art supplies that makes you want to try something. Oh yeah. So I'm kind of, um, so that's kind of how it's affected me. I, I think that there's, I want to work bigger mm -hmm. and I, I'm not there yet. I'm not at that place where I can do it. I know what I want to start out doing. I can see it. And by the time I get there, I'm not sure I will still see that. But um, that's kind of, a, you know, I've experienced creativity and then nothing. Mm -hmm. I just don't have it. So I'm looking forward to another day. Yeah, I think I think all artists go through that. It's kind of it's kind of like we we have these periods of like you're still thinking about the art in your head, mm -hmm. like it's there, but it just hasn't materialized mm -hmm. yet, you know. Um, and then all of a sudden, it's just gonna like burst out of you, <laughs> and then you'll do a lot of work. Um, where are some other places that we can currently view your work? either Austin, Round Rock, or elsewhere? Uh, besides my website and also Instagram, I post uh, some of those things um, there, paintings and, and prints there. Um, and the 620 Gallery. I'm also going to be um, in the uh, Round Rock prints at the Downtown Gallery. Mm -hmm. I was uh, asked to be a juror on that. So uh, I will have some prints in the in that particular show. Um, I have, I'm not quite sure how many paintings I have, but I know I have paintings in the Fem Abstract Show, which is in Austin right now in January. Um, Moya McIntyre um, curated it. This is the second one. She had another one a couple of years ago. So knock on wood, I was fortunate enough to be in that. And then the um, the viral collaboration show is going on in Chicago and it's over a hundred artists and uh, it will be on view at the Bridgeport Art Center. I think that's the name uh, in January. And we can see that online as well? Um, you should be, um, I'm not sure she's still hanging Mm -hmm. at this particular moment but it's almost up so i'll be posting about that so all right well very cool we look forward to seeing more of your work and thank you so much for being a part of this show um i love your work it's so interesting i love your titles as i said before um and hopefully we'll get lots of people in here to see it in person um we're going to have that gallery hop on january 30th and i want to get over to the downtowner and see your work there as well Okay, great. I'm looking forward to it. And like I said, thank you again. I know um, I've seen what I've seen online. You posted. It looks fantastic. It's really lovely. Yeah, it's a good show. All thank right. You. Thank you.